The Venus Project described a future world without money, without government, but with robots and advanced artificial intelligence. A future where everyone will get everything they need to live free as in a library. Not only inspires a desire to believe that this will happen, but also many questions. Today, we will try to address the key of these questions. The project of a bright technological future is described in detail in the video at the link in the hint. In short, the founder of the project, Jacques Fresco, considered the only right way for mankind to develop, one which all the boring, dangerous, and monotonous work is done by robots and advanced artificial intelligence. People live in smart cities, which are completely self-sufficient automated systems that take into account not only their own needs, but also the needs of the planet. Free access to everything we need, education, medicine, fully roboticized farms and industries, and city systems controlled by artificial intelligence that make sure there is enough for everyone. The idea is terrific, but many people still have questions. For example, what's the difference between the Venus Project and communism and socialism? Jacques Fresco felt that the transition to a new organization of the life on planet might not be a revolutionary one, but an evolutionary one. The probable cause of change would be a global crisis, as robotization would take away jobs from large numbers of people, they would lose purchasing power and anything produced by large companies and corporations will remain unclaimed. Thus, according to Fresco, humanity must realize that the consumer economy, like the monetary system, is obsolete. Here, we can fall into a protracted economic depression, or we can prepare for that time and transition to a resource-based economy in which science and technology ensure the rational use of resources for the benefit of all humanity and nature. The transition to this economic model is systematic replacing old cities with new ones backed up by experiments and testing of hypotheses for the best decision of these self-sufficient, highly automated cities. The very construction of these new cities and the disposal of obsolete ones is also being automated, which, in the long run, will also not require human participation. A sufficiently developed network of such cities will make it possible to abandon the now obsolete monetary relations. This is something other than taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. The next question for the Venus Project concerns the details of artificial intelligence. After all, in order to know people's needs, to control appropriate and sufficient production, a system of sensors must be implemented everywhere, from agricultural fields to health sensors on our bodies sending information about medicines we need to robotic pharmacies. What if AI, knowing this much about us, decided to make us the slaves? Jacques Fresco's answer to this question is disconcertingly simple. It's not the technology we should fear, which simply cannot be malicious. It's only the people who control the technology that we should fear. This was why he was against politicians and people in power. For the rest, Fresco, as a social engineer, argued that if one person were placed in a favorable environment, it would form a new system of values. We'll talk more about this and how to achieve it later. A common complaint about the project is the assumption that it is designed only for the so-called golden billion. On the official website of the project, it's repeatedly emphasized that its goal is to multiply the spiritual and intellectual potential of all people. The resources on Earth are declared the common heritage of all mankind, and if used rationally, there are more than enough. In addition, the project does not offer everyone to build a palace and get an electric racing car. Fresco was convinced that with the availability of everything necessary, human values would change. Ownership of property would cease to have meaning or purpose. For example, why would you want to maintain your car when you can call a robo-taxi that will take you anywhere and drive itself to the parking lot? Or, if you're on vacation in the mountains, you don't need to take a drone to take aerial photos of the best moments. You can borrow it and then return it to the distribution center when you no longer need it. Having constant access to every resource is more profitable than constantly trying to buy or appropriate it all. Making sure that everything from food to gadgets is enough for everyone will be monitored by artificial intelligence, generating production orders, controlling automated farms, and logistics. As for religion, in the society of future according to Jacques Fresco, there will be a place for all faiths. The main thing is that people do not put faith above facts. If such a future were to come true, would there be a degradation of the population? Jacques Fresco was convinced that, no, this would not happen. By satisfying all basic needs, including security, by providing a relevant education, people would be more willing to develop in areas of interest, and every opportunity would be provided for this. Sitting idly by would not be interesting. New challenges, solutions to global problems, and exploration of the world, including space, await us.
A difficult question about the Venus Project is how to avoid being amused by people who program artificial intelligence to do certain things. The answer lies partly with the previous one, about the value system, and partly with the next one, which is, where does the Venus Project stand today? Today, Jock Fresco's like-minded communities are systemizing and popularizing with his writings in order to generate sufficient demand in society for this direction. It doesn't sound as grandiose as if they were already building a city of the future somewhere, does it? But it all rests on financing and the support of states and large foundations. The next planned step is to build a resource management center to work on developing systems and be a step toward future cities. The hope that such a project, which would overturn the whole current system, could be implemented by a small group of people without proper funding seems ridiculous. We can sit and wait for a brighter future, but unfortunately, it will not come on its own. Only by developing ideas, telling about them to as many people as possible will you ever get results. A wonderful new world will have to be built gradually, and it will require enthusiasm and energy of talented engineers, people of science, and the broad masses who support the ideas of the project. To build even one sufficient city, it is necessary to open research institutes, to create prototypes of such city systems, and only after the preparatory work, it will be possible to create a real city of the future. Not without reason, Fresco always talked about a guided evolution, and it must be guided by our will that moves consciousness, science, and technology in the right direction, and by the will of billions of people. As for accusations of the project as a utopia, Fresco himself did not think so. And according to him, these proposals are far from perfect, but significantly better than what we have now. He believed that a society is always in transition, constantly choosing which direction to take. So why not choose one that addresses the causes of our major problems? And as we go down this path, humanity and technology will continually evolve and adjust our future paths of development. We'd like you to note that Jacques Fresco's vision of the world and the future is only one of the options for the development of humanity. But it's also one of the best. Although today's statistics say that robots displacing some professions create other jobs, there's no guarantee that this will always be the case. And while you may not be directly affected by this now, there are billions of people in the world below the poverty line. The richest 2% own most of the wealth and consequently the resources. This state of affairs will inevitably lead to wars, resource scarcity, hunger, and pollution. There's also no telling where the creation of advanced artificial intelligence will lead, looking for advantages only for a certain group of people or the state. We see a great deal of enthusiasm in the military for AI, and this is a higher priority than sponsoring the development of its peaceful applications for the benefit of all people and nature. Today, we'd like to remind our most regular viewers of the slogan we often aired a year or two ago. You can change the future. Join the channel, like this video, and share it with your friends so that everyone you know can also learn about the Venus Project and an alternate future.